Welcome to Tech Savvy. My name is Lee Newman. I'm the Executive Director of the Campus Operations for West Georgia Tech in LaGrange, Georgia. And we're really starting off an excellent semester this for spring semester. We've probably up a little over a percentage point in enrollment. So that doesn't usually happen for spring. It's usually a, it's, it's been in most colleges across the state going down, but we're real excited. I think we're getting the news out that if you want a job and a good job, you can come to West Georgia Tech to learn how to get that job and learn the skills that are necessary to get those jobs that are in high demand. Today's um, special guest star, he's new at West Georgia Tech in the, on the LaGrange campus. And his name is Steve Cromer. He is the Senior Director for Advanced Manufacturing. Welcome to Tech Savvy. Thank you. Welcome to LaGrange and welcome to West Georgia Tech. I think you've been on the job three months? Since November 2nd. Since right. November 2nd. And you've been busy since you started. Very busy. There's a lot going on at, La at LaGrange and West Georgia Tech. Well, I want you to tell our viewers, first of all, what Senior Director for Advanced Manufacturer does. Most of my focus is working uh, directly with the industry and uh, with the human resources areas of, of uh, different manufacturing plants and industry to find out exactly what training they need to make their companies more efficient and especially in the maintenance areas to make sure that the uh, production process goes smoothly and uh, so that they can become more efficient in their processes and uh, we, we have definitely found out that there's a real emphasis on finding qualified technicians. And uh, my, my main objective is to reach out to those industries and those uh, HR managers to help them uh, uh, obtain those uh, employees so that they can fill those empty positions. There are a lot of them out there. For right. what it sounds like we, we get to request all the time for anybody in the maintenance area. Yeah, just this morning uh, I had an industry visit and they have seven positions open in the maintenance area and every one of those positions require uh, a level of education by technical school. So that What fits. skills are they looking for? What specific skills? I mean, in the industry, a lot of people don't understand, first of all, that it's not like it used to mm -hmm. be. It's so clean. It's, it's a clean environment. Right. Well, for the most part, it's clean. It does require uh, technicians to use specified tools for the job. It does, uh, you know, get uh, a little dirty at times, but compared to what it was even five years ago, it's definitely a lot cleaner. The main skill sets that they're looking for is somebody that can uh, identify uh, issues with a piece of machinery, identify what the problems may be, and then uh, with those uh, bits of information they have, determine what the causes of the problem are, identify how to repair those uh, errors, and get the machine back up and running because what industry that, uh, that we're talking about is so reliant on is products coming off the, the line being ready for shipment to customers. And without a machine running, those orders just simply can't get filled. So it's not a matter of hours and days for repair, it's a matter of minutes and seconds. So a, a good technician that can have an excellent career in the maintenance field has to have very good skills of identifying uh, faults with automated equipment, how to use the specified tools necessary, hand tools and uh, power tools, and using test equipment. Uh, that's a big, big part of it. What about preventative maintenance? Is that all part yes. of it? Preventive maintenance is, is essential uh, because with, <clears throat> with preventive maintenance you can prolong the operation of a machine without potential breakdown. So a student that would come to the college to learn about maintenance technical programs in those areas would have a big, big part in preventive maintenance and along with that comes safety. You have to understand what the safety issues can potentially be, uh, the severity of those safety issues, and how to prevent those mm -hmm. uh, from occurring. Uh, one of the big things that industry really stresses is you've got to be safe in the work area. 
because OSHA if an employee, right, OSHA is a big part of it, mm -hmm. and they want to stress that if an employee gets injured, that 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 part of the plant can be potentially shut down indefinitely uh, if it involves OSHA. Well, the thing about it is, too many times OSHA has, when there have been accidents, is related to like carelessness. Mm -hmm. So the key to cut out those particular injuries and accidents is to make sure that they are always aware of their surroundings right. and make sure that they make it a safe environment. Right. And because you sometimes might go off on a side right. train of thought, and then that's when you get in the most dangerous. Right. One of the key things that industry uh, is really stressing now you may have heard of Six Sigma mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, elements of that is safety and there's a saying in industry that everything has space and everything takes up space and the way they use that is for instance if there's a mop that goes in a designated space and a maintenance technician walks by that area and sees that, that mop is missing it tells that person there might be a spill and then they have to identify what kind of spill it may be. Is it mm -hmm. chemical? Mm -hmm. Is it blood? So there's a number of red flags that has to be identified for that maintenance technician by using that safety component to identify how to react in a given situation. Well, that's one of the millions of things that they're going to have to be aware of and make sure of their environment. Tell me about, like you were talking about troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. Most of it, a lot of it will be troubleshooting, but in yes. order to troubleshoot, you have to know what the main issue is. Right. You've got to know how it works so you right. can figure out what's wrong with it to fix it. Right, it's, it's all about critical thinking skills mm -hmm. and how to determine uh, what, what the starting point is. And one of those starting points is learning how to read schematic diagrams. Um, before you ever open up a cabinet to an electrical panel, you study the electrical diagrams and understand what the fault may be. Um, then you have to rely on a lot of your learned skills from theory mm -hmm. uh, to determine what's, what your next step is. Um, one of the things that we stress uh, in, in the program of study is to uh, use a voltometer. Mm -hmm. A voltometer is a basic tool that every technician learns to use. It's not hard to learn how to use it. It's just one of those basic tools that we learn to use uh, so that we can become a skilled troubleshooter. Well, this sounds really, really good. How do you get students to be interested in <clears> something okay. like this? That's a good question. Um, as a former instructor of the program area, I used to tell my brand new students, uh, I would ask them who discovered electricity, and they all knew that Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity. And, the, and I would always ask them, well, how in the world do you think he did it? And they would go through the story of he flew a kite in an electrical storm. And then I would ask them, well, do you think ben, ben Franklin was a smart individual? And every one of them would raise their hands, oh, yes, he was one of the most intelligent people you know, ever you know, to live on earth. And I would always counter that and I would say, no, he was probably one of the, one of the least intelligent because who in, the, in their right mind would go out and fly a kite with a wire tied to it, a conductive wire in a lightning storm and wait to see what happened? And the, the purpose of that story is there's no such thing as a stupid question in a classroom. Right. Especially when you're in a classroom like a, an electrical class, learning how to work with uh, electrical circuits safely. And the neat thing about working with electricity is, and training for that, is you're learning to control something that was intended to never be controlled. Mm -hmm. And then I would ask the students, well, imagine your life without electricity. There's nothing in our lifestyle today, especially in America, arguably the most modernized country in the world that does not use electricity every moment of every day. Mm -hmm. uh, Walmart simply would not be functional. We wouldn't have running water. Uh, so there's a lot of basic functions we simply can't go without. And that's why uh, electricians and people that work with electricity and manipulate electricity to produce uh, the goods and services that we need every day are in such high demand. So 
I, I always in, like to intrigue young people to learn about electricity and, and, and how they can control something that's really not meant to be controlled. Mm -hmm. And to do it safely can make an excellent career. And if, and if an individual learns these skill sets, how to work with electrical circuitry and mechanical devices, which is now called mechatronics, they have stability in, in a career for a lifetime. And uh, it's, it's fun to watch young people uh, when the light bulb comes on and they grasp the concept and they start beginning to understand um, how they can have a role in that lifestyle and in that career um, is something I believe in. It's, uh, in technical education is something I've grown to believe in. Uh, I'm a product of technical education myself mm -hmm. and uh, it's just a, a fun thing to be a part of. Well, I'm very proud of what we're doing at West Georgia Tech. I mean, we're making such a difference in so mm -hmm. many people's lives. I mean, they come all ages, high school students, they're going to be able right. to get out of high school and have a, tr have a skill right. that they can actually go to work, or they're going to have college credit that will right. help give them a leg up when they decide to go to college. But um, there are a lot of people that want to change jobs. Absolutely. There are a lot of people that are underemployed. Right. Um, we see a lot of people come into our programs of study who are in their late 20s, 30s, 40s, even 50s, and they have these untapped resources. They have these untapped skill sets that they, they're just not satisfied with where they are, but they're not sure what skill sets they do have. And uh, those sometimes, uh, and more often than not, become the best students and the ones that employers really yeah. gain the most out of because they, they understand what they want. They have a drive to obtain that lifestyle they want through education. Mm -hmm. And for an instructor, they are a pleasure to work with. Well, we've got come to our first break, well, our only break, and we'll come back in a few minutes and we'll get into some more of the details okay. of your job. Okay? All right. All right. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back to Tech Savvy. Today's special guest star is Steve Cromer, and he's the Senior Director for Advanced Manufacturing at West Georgia Tech. And we're fortunate to have him on the LaGrange campus. He's been telling us about all the good things that technical education and his program really make a difference in people's lives because they're able to have very rewarding and continued um, rewarding careers and they continued the options to mm -hmm. excel in those careers. All right, right now you are, you, like you said, you went to an industry this morning. What you're trying to do is tell industry what programs we're offering. All right. All right, so we, what we want to do is let them know that, okay, they, they're looking for maintenance technicians. We're teaching those students to become maintenance technicians. How do we do that? Are we going to, I think we're supposed to be getting some hot new equipment in our industry. We are, we are. Can you tell us about that? <coughs> yeah, I'll go back to about the industry visits. One of the things I do is when I go out to do an industry visit, uh, I always want to go through a tour of that facility to make sure that I have a clear understanding of what their operation is so that I can better relate the training to exactly what they're looking for. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that most all production facilities are similar in that they are all producing a product. And the machinery uh, and the automation systems they're using, they're all similar in their processes. They're just manufactured and designed a little bit different for each company for their individualized product. So <clears throat> you, can, you can set up a training program that is kind of in the middle of all the industries in, in that all the training equipment can be the basically the same. It's just that uh, you, you have a little bit of uh, differences in how they're designed and set up for each company. So the way we set it up uh, at the LaGrange campus for West Georgia Tech is that there are um, classrooms dedicated uh, to the students and there are lab spaces dedicated to the students. We have a, a certain amount of theory that each student needs to learn before they can go into the lab. Uh, <clears throat> and the way I like to do it is, is having a three-step process, is to teach a student by theory, 
because every student doesn't learn the same. Uh, you, you give them visual aids in theory, uh, then you, you discuss it in an open classroom. Uh, then you take the student in the lab and put that same, those same pieces of equipment and devices in their hands that you were talking about in the classroom and have them implement that, that, that device and, and manipulate it the way you discussed. And then you give an assessment to determine how, uh, how well they, uh, they have uh, retained that information. So you need to find out exactly where either student is. Some students may have already had some basic tool usage skill sets, and some may have none. But so we go through a process of de determining where their skill sets lie at the time. And um, we try to pair students up that uh, will complement each other. Uh, sometimes it's younger students paired with an older student. Um, some it's based on a student that has lower skill sets paired with one that has advanced skill sets so that they can uh, help each other. Uh, it's not all about just the teacher and the student. It's about students and teachers in a collaboration of learning. And uh, because when they get in industry, they're not going to have an instructor with them. They're going to have to work with an individual that may or may have the same skill sets, or less or higher skill sets. So they've got to learn how to get along and communicate with somebody of different skill sets. Certainly. So we try to, uh, to replicate that in the training process. With this new equipment, I think um, $2.7 million right. for our industrial lab, because first of all, we needed updating mm -hmm. major. I mean, right. It was just some obsolete uh, equipment. But also because of our industry, the industry in our area is demanding yeah. the latest and the greatest right. training and equipment. Yeah. And another thing that is a really important, I think a lot of people that are, are in the industry now that have been there for a mm -hmm. while, they need updating. Right, that's a good point. Uh, one of the things that we are finding out uh, more so lately than I think in the past five or six years of my experience is that while a lot of companies have a maintenance department and technicians already employed, a lot of the employees in those maintenance positions are great at their craft, but technology has outpaced their skill sets. Mm -hmm. So what we know is that uh, existing uh, industry, uh, they're wanting to send their maintenance people back for advanced training to get them up to speed with where the technology is today and where it's going tomorrow. Um, one of the things that we're uh, seeing more and more of is automation systems in the use of robots. Mm -hmm. And 10 years ago, if you mentioned the word robot in, in advanced manufacturing, it was not real prevalent. But now, there's not many uh, industries that, didn't, that do not use some form of robotic uh, manufa manufacturing in their process, whether it be material handling for uh, hazardous materials, mm -hmm. uh, for safety purposes, or simply for repetitive production. Welding. Right, welding, something that's very repetitive, that has to be very precise because although uh, some people can be trained highly on productive skill sets, uh, robots do the same job perfectly every time. It's very repetitive and that's where precision manufacturing comes into mm -hmm. play is when there's very little tolerance for error in the production process. So that's what automation systems can do is um, if you've ever gone on a tour of an industry, say you went 10, 12, 15 years ago through a production facility, you saw hundreds of people working on a production line. You go through that same plant today and you, you would probably see about a fourth of the number of people on that production line. And those people have been replaced by machines. And the reason I bring that up is because <clears throat> the jobs that we're training for or for those jobs that keep those machines running that are much, much higher paying jobs than those production line jobs that were there 10, 12, 15 years right. ago. While there are not as many jobs, there are much higher skill sets and much higher salary. A whole lot more valuable to their right. industry because right. if, like you said, you know, downtime is very expensive. That's right. And as long as you've got somebody that knows how to fix the machine and right. effectively and efficiently, right. then 
they're very valuable to the that's right. bottom line. That's and right. that's why they pay them more. Too, that's why they pay them more, and that's why they are in such high demand, have been in such high demand for a number of years, but now companies are realizing that demand uh, much more significantly because, again, technology has continued to advance, and automation systems have continued to advance, and the maintenance people that they had are not able to keep up now, so there they is much, more, much higher demand for advanced training. So this equipment that we're getting in our lab is the latest and It the is. It's a state-of-the-art lab. Uh, the training equipment is, has the latest and greatest technology. Um, and just to go along with that, um, I believe that we have uh, just hired, uh, as of last Thursday, a full-time instructor dedicated to that program uh, that has the right experience and the right technological uh, expertise to teach this program of study so that uh, employers and, and students will know that when they come to that lab, one, they have the greatest equipment they could possibly train on, and they have an instructor who uh, cares about uh, them being successful and understands how to train on the equipment. And then they also, in, in all of our tra um, trade classes and our technical classes, they have to have experience in the industry. Yes. Because they need to know what industry is looking for right. on a day to day, minute by minute process. And they want to see their thought process, right. their problem solving skills, the critical thinking skills, things like that. But they also need to know how to use the tools, right. use the equipment that is being, that they're having to work on. So, right. The lab is going to emulate uh, a lot of the real world applications that they will see when they get that career that they're coming to school for. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I want to really implement in this new program is uh, a, a reinvigorated contact with industry. And what I mean by that is having a lot of field trips in, in embedded in that curriculum so that it's not about to come to school every day. It's about coming to school, learning the material, and then having the instructor go with them to a location, to an and industry, it. and Practical. touring it and seeing what they are learning in motion, in action, so that uh, they can better relate what they're learning to what's so really occurring. That's how I learn is mm -hmm. if I can apply right. the theory that you learn about. Right. Well, that's exciting, and I'm so I'm so excited about getting the equipment because it is such need, but it's mm -hmm. also what industry industry has asked right. for. Right, and, and it's a key role of industry to be involved in the college. Uh, we have we have an advisory board. committee board. And, and the information we gather from those individuals that represent their specific industry areas. It's the information that they give us that makes us better and makes sure that we are providing the right education, the right training uh, for those students so that when they graduate, walk across that stage, they're not only graduated and trained in a specific skill set, but they're ready to go to work. First day. Right. First day. I think um, another thing that is encouraging to people that will be looking for a job when they graduate is there's a lot of retiring technicians. Mm -hmm. in those areas that these people have been in the business for 30, 40, 50 years, they're fixing to retire. Right. And so there's going to be some openings and being trained to go to work the next day is going to be such an ideal situation for these people that are graduating right. and they'll have a job to go to. That's why it's so critical to have our industry partners. So that, um, so that when these young students are coming through the program of study and they get that interview with that employer, they probably, by that time, they will probably have already toured that facility. That's my goal is to have these students tour these facilities so that it's not strange to them when they arrive yes, there. Yeah. And uh, they have the skill sets necessary. They have the soft skills of working with other people. Um, and they understand what work ethics are. Showing up for That's class every day curriculum. equals showing up for work every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want our employers to understand that uh, we stress that with our students. We that, guarantee. That's right. That, that showing up every day is part of the requirement that we have, and, and that's what we would expect as they do. Mm -hmm. And that's right. We have a warranty on our students. If they uh, don't, if they can't do what we tell, t said that they were supposed right. to be able to do, then we'll train them. For that's free. right. For a period of two years after graduation, if a student 
is not uh, as well prepared as we say they should be. They can come back for training absolutely free in that skill set area. Um, but I, Lee, I can't recall a, a warranty ever being enacted. Uh, and, and that speaks volumes to the technical education I think system. It's, there are a few and far between, but well, Steve, we've run out of time. Okay. Will you come back? I will. And again, welcome to the college, welcome to LaGrange, and welcome to the West Georgia Tech family. I'm glad to glad, be here. We're glad to have you, and we're looking forward to a lot of good stuff. Okay. We really are. And thank you very much for joining us on Tech Savvy, and we look forward to seeing you in the ne next episode.